Hi guys, it's been 12 months since I started my gyms. I thought I'd take a bit of time just to go over some highlights of the last year, some of the lessons that I've learned and then some things that might help you along the way as well if you're starting your own business or you've started with gyms. Um, one of the biggest things that I learned over the last year is, is your pricing is just so incredibly important for both not only making yourself profitable, but also being efficient with your time, making the most money you can while you're at that job, but also ensuring that your pricing is appropriate because there's so many times that you you might even think you've gone over on price but when you get into the job you realize you're pretty much spot on so i guess the big thing that i've learned over the last year is understanding my quoting understanding the time that it takes to do jobs but also recognizing the value of what i do um, for the customer as well because it's easy to undersell yourself and think think of it from your own perspective of what you'd you would pay for the job but in saying that you're the one that's doing the hard yards and the hard work it's it's one of the most challenging industries physically to be in so there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to make good money doing something that is so physical and so challenging so don't don't be afraid of, of quoting what you think the job's worth um, the service industry when it's weather dependent is is quite challenging we've had some of the most full-on weather um, some franchisors and franchisees that I've been a, been in communication with have said it's been the toughest season in 30 years. I just know we had weeks and weeks of wet weather. Uh, I think we had three small floods in the Gold Coast and, and around southeast Queensland in general. And obviously that impacted so many people in even in the mid mid North Coast and down to Newcastle, Sydney areas. Um, but as a service based industry, when you're weather dependent, that can really smash your cash flow. So. That was one of the big inhibitors to my first year. Um, in making as much money as I wanted to, and and leading into winter the winter period, it was it was probably more challenging than I would have hoped or would have expected to be. Just for the fact that I couldn't take on new customers because I had all this work backed up, so much rain, conditions that were too wet to work in, and then waiting for for the lawns to dry out to be able to make the income again. So. I ended up with about 50 regulars over that over that time period and realistically I would have been hoping for about 70 to 80 to, to feel comfortable going into winter. In saying that, winter's actually been really nice, I've actually liked the slower pace of it, although it hasn't been as financially viable over that time just because of those issues with not having enough regulars. I have picked up a lot of little jobs along the way, extra jobs and I tend to be kind of putting along. Um, but even saying that, we've, we have had a, a, a bit of rain throughout the um, this period as well. So there's been a bit of impact to that even coming into uh, to the tail end of winter now, which hopefully I'll make a little video about um, pretty soon. The other thing is try not to work on hourly rates at all. Where you can, it, there's a bit of, there's a bit of getting used to getting the feel for jobs and maybe that's appropriate when you're early in. Just saying, okay, for this job, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run hourly for 77 bucks an hour or whatever it might be. If you're doing a hedging job and, it's, and you're not really sure how to do it, maybe you'll go a slightly higher rate and, and just so you get a bit of confidence under your belt as well. So, so that's, but moving forward as I've, as I've grown in it, I haven't wanted to, to focus so much on hourly rates. Because at the end of the day, when you're doing that sort of work, you're on the clock essentially. So you can tend to work slower. You can tend to want to drag it out personally, and it's not that good for the customer either. So if you have the confidence to get to quote those jobs, um, it's definitely better to go that way because you know you're working to a certain um, price, and that you can work faster and more efficiently and get out of that job as early as possible and feel like you've worked, made really good money. The times where I felt the happiest about doing this kind of work and the gardening has been the times where I've known I'm making decent money an hour. Um, you know, when you're working an hourly rate, it can do your head in a little bit. So it's an easy, it's an easy kind of one to. There's no risk in it, but there's also limited reward in it. You know, you, you have a base rate that you're going off, um, but it is a bit of a learning curve along the way, when, especially when you're new, and that's part of the challenge. Um, route density and quality of customers. So my goal in the next sort of year 
is to really focus on, particularly through this new upcoming spring and summer period, is to just get some route density underway, a lot more customers that are closer to me, and also to get to that, to get to that 70 or 80 customers at least. And I think I'll probably sit at 80 hopefully by the end of this season. And that way with the experience that I've got now, um, and hopefully La, La Nina will help me uh, this year or at least not turn up, might be, might be good. Um, but if I can go into this new new season with um, a good income during the summer and spring spring period, um, it'll help me a lot more for the winter period when it is a bit quieter. And also, you know, I can take that opportunity to have a rest and let the body relax and have some time with the family and take some holidays and that sort of thing. So, so the other thing was that maturing business takes time. You, you know, there's a lot of marketing, a lot of great marketing that the guys do at gyms and there's a lot of focus on, on gross income and, and that's a really, really great thing because there's some really successful people. But also you have to go in with, the, with a bit of a sober mind as well into it, thinking about you know, what your net profit's gonna be, what your taxes are gonna be once you fulfill all your responsibilities tax-wise with your BAS statements and then your income tax, you know, your franchise fees and different things that come out. So, you know, don't look at gross numbers as a, as a, as a a real success of your business. Look at your look at your cash flow. Look, at, I guess your your net profits probably the most important thing. So, I found, you know, I was able to, to sit a decent a decent income every, every week um, and make it make a, a very similar income to what I what I made previously in a in a corporate managerial role in a senior manager role. Um, but as well, you've got to you've got to juggle things like weather. You've got to juggle things like um, you know, annual leave and putting aside money for that. You got to think about equipment. You got to think about maintenance of your equipment. You know, fuel costs. That's increased significantly this year. So, so you're running a business which takes time. So don't just jump into it thinking you're going to make a million dollars in your, in your first year. You know, um, look at it realistically and just understand that a, a maturing business is something that is going to take a few years. For me this year, I've gone into it just wanting to make a set income, and and then I want to just build on that every year. And I reckon by by at least the third year, I'll have you know three seasons under my belt. I'll have good route density. I'll have good paying customers. I'll be getting the cream of I guess what I'm taking on at the moment, and and just really focusing on making things more efficient and making it more profitable. And also for me to to, to gain greater skills and hopefully buy equipment that's going to help me to be faster and make more money as well. So things that I really need to work on moving forward, these are a couple of things that I think are really important. I've done a lot of DVA work, a lot of NDIS work, a lot of work cover um, and they can be really beneficial as long as you are making it work for you as opposed to making it work for the customer because you can get set into an hourly rate. I think I think work covers about fifty dollars an hour. Um, DVA generally most of my clients at DVA are about one hundred and thirty to one hundred and thirty two dollars for two hours. So, um, but what I found is sometimes I get I get stuck on the early rate with those customers. So it's certainly very important for you to um, make those jobs work for you as opposed to you working for an hourly rate for those customers. I found as I went along, um, I was more upfront with the customers about the pricing structure and saying, look, if, if you've got $132 of value, I'll work out my pricing according to that value, not based on the time that I'm here. So you, you, as long as you're upfront with the customers about that, especially you know if you're going into those sort of agreements, if they're not interested in that, that's fine. You've got to walk away from those jobs. But I found particularly um, doing those those kind of jobs actually can be a bit of bread and butter over the winter period, especially because most of them are fortnightly. So there's a lot of pros and cons to that sort of work. But there's also delays in cash flow. Sometimes they take a lot longer to pay. I know DVA, we had a lot of challenges with this year. But um, so my goal moving forward would, would be to more um, to to steer away from those in future and slowly taper out of that sort of work and have something that I know is going to be consistent cash flow and, and the jobs that I do retain or if I pick up yeah, those sort of jobs later on, I'll be more um, more focused on ensuring that that customer knows up front that you know, I, I, I don't have a set hourly rate, 
I work off what's re required per the job and you try and package it into, into what their budget is. So that's a really important one. Um, and that will minimize any bit payment delays as well because sometimes they do take a while to pay um, some of those ones. So the highlights for the last year, I've got a few little points here. Um, you know, surviving the most challenging season in 30 years. <laughs> uh, that's probably a huge one, uh, particularly for my first year of business. So, you know, we had a baptism of fire, more so a baptism probably with all the, the rain that we've had. And that has been huge. That If we didn't have those challenges in that, um, in the amount of challenges that we did have in the weather, I would be so much further ahead financially than what I am at the moment. Um, but that's just part of the deal with this sort of industry if you're working in weather dependent industries like this. Um, thankfully, that's hopefully the worst it can be. Um, if, it's, if that's the worst it's been in somewhat 30 years, um, you know, I can only go up from here essentially. So the other benefit is that there is so much potential to build a really profitable business. So I have had a lot of great weeks with really good income um, and that cash keeps flowing in. The only challenges I have with the cash flow has been simply the weather issues that we've had. And I can see the potential of the business and knowing now what I know, after the last year of experience, I'm going into a brand new year with 50 more customers, 50 more regulars than I had this time last year. And I know I'm gonna build a significantly better business this year with what I've learnt and, um, and applying all that knowledge from the last year. And I've also gained greater confidence with quoting. So it's, it's still challenging, obviously, especially when you've got the bigger jobs, but I've found there's simply, there's just so much more confidence with going into, into that sort of scenario. Understanding what time takes to, to do things, understanding the amount of green waste, understanding how long it might take to take that job. Um, sometimes it's, it's the challenge of stopping yourself and not going too far with the work because I'm a, I'm a attention to detail person. So you really got to consider you know, at what point you stop doing certain jobs too um, to get a great result, but not also uh, put yourself out of pocket as well. Anyway, today is my anniversary with gyms and, and in the lawn contractor field, and it's been super cool. Um, I've learned a heap of things, um, and I'm looking forward to going into this brand new um, season, coming into spring very soon the next week, and maximizing um, the, the potential to make, make a lot more money this year and um, be really successful. So thanks for your time, and I'll talk to you again soon.